What's up everybody? What a beautiful day for trucking in the UK. Live from the M4 westbound, baby. You are watching Trucker Josh Vlogs. Enjoy. Another day is here. It's delivery day. I have to del deliver that load we picked up in Edmonton the other day. It goes to Gretna, Manitoba, which is a town right on the US border south of here. This was Highway 305 that we just turned onto. It connects Highway 59 and Highway 75 in southern Manitoba. 75 is uh, the highway that turns into Interstate 29. Once you get to the US, for my American friends, you can sort of visualize where we're at. If you follow I-29 all the way north into Canada, turns into the 75, takes you right up into Winnipeg. But we're not going to Winnipeg, we're actually going right to the US border. So Gretna is a small little town in Yonzi on the other side of the river. Just, I guess that's west of the Red River. When we say the river in Manitoba, I'm referring to the Red River. got this small load, it's about seven skids. I mean, I showed it to you on the way up here, right? If you saw my past videos. Every once in a while, you'll see in my videos on the top left of your screen, uh, there'll be a little link that pops up there. The first link that pops up early in the video is usually a link to my playlist that has all of my TJV series from number one, all the way to the one we're on today, which is what, 2577? Somewhere in there, somewhere, I don't know, somewhere around there. You can watch them all in order that way if you'd like to. Uh, and other links pop up to my last four videos other than that. And then at the end of the video, there's two uh, links that'll pop up on your screen as well. I'll just take you to some other content of mine uh, that I've put up recently. Been doing this for quite a while. If you're new, don't forget to subscribe. Follow my life daily as a truck driver. I'm based out of Southeast Manitoba in Canada. That's just above uh, Western, Northwestern Minnesota. Usually I got my dog Diesel with me, but today is just a little day trip, so it's not gonna take too long. We're gonna go there, take the tarp off. They're gonna take off their seven skids. I'll roll up the tarps. I gotta bring this trailer back to our yard, and then I go home. Simple day today. Tomorrow we're heading down to Fargo in North Dakota with a load of lumber. So I got emptied very quickly. We're back here in, uh, I almost called it Balgoni. Just no, I'm in uh, St. Agath, Manitoba. Met a couple of followers here and viewers uh, that came out here from all the way in the southwest corner of Manitoba. So, hey again to you guys. Thanks for running over here to say hi. My fuel economy, this is what I've been waiting for. All the way from Edmonton to here with that light load, with the wind pushing me most of the way, we did really good. We got under 30 liters per 100 kilometers and I'll convert it right away to miles per gallon right away for you. Barely, but we got under 30. 29.99 liters per 100 kilometers. Oh, that's good. Now check this out, let's do this to, uh, let's convert this to America speak for my friends in the US. Uh, liters, 29.99 liters per 100 kilometers in US miles per gallon. Not the regular gallons, the US gallons, the freedom gallons. Freedom gallons, US gallons. That's what they like to call them anyways. Okay. It's not telling me. Usually it tells me right away. Two US, oh, two US miles per gallon. Got excited here, I typed it in wrong. Confused my, 7.843 miles per US gallon. 7.8 miles per gallon. And we got paid full load for that load too. <laughs> Cha-ching. Ka-chow. Nice. I'm gonna write this in my book. How much should we fill up for? 517 liters. 
I'm very happy with that. <laughs> that, was, that was a good week. That was a good week. So tomorrow I got a load of lumber. It's already waiting for us at our yard. Uh, that's taking me down to Fargo, North Dakota. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this empty flatbed back to our yard, drop it, hook onto my loaded lumber if I have to, pull it out, tie it down, get it ready for tomorrow, and then we'll go back to our shop and uh, probably give Old Blue a little bit of a bath if I have time by that point. It's 2.30 right now. I wanna enjoy the day at home yet too. This is sort of my weekend today, just this afternoon, because uh, it's Sunday when I'm filming this, and tomorrow is back to work already, so I wanna make sure that uh, I do get home at a good time. So, without delay, let's be on our way. Oh, window down. It is humid and hot out today. It is a July summer day and I love it. That was a really good week. I'll take more of those, please. You know who you are? You load gods out there? That was wonderful. Good week to be trucking. The weather was great, the wind was in my favor. Good loads. I had to sacrifice my weekend, but that's okay. I get a longer weekend next weekend because of our IVF transfer. So I'll be home by Wednesday evening and then I'll be home till the following Monday. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I'll take this weekend, next weekend. I'll get two weekends in one. Boy, having the windows down doesn't cool anything down at all. It's like a heater blowing in there. I thought Canada was cold, Trucker Josh! Half the year, yeah. And half the year, the sun won't leave us alone. It just doesn't go away. our new load and sometimes that happens it's not a big deal I'll show you how you can fix it you uh, need to have yourself uh, like a hand big like a big commercial hand stapler like a piece of cardboard or something like that and you just staple the cardboard over on top of that and it holds it down but uh, yeah that happens from time to time doesn't look pretty though this load came in from Saskatchewan here in our yard. I'm gonna be taking it the rest of the way down to Fargo, North Dakota. I'm just gonna scale it right now. And uh, check to make sure that the weights are good with my truck so I don't have to worry about that tomorrow yet. And if everything's good, I'm gonna tie it down. And go home. Oh, I'll go to the shop and then go home. So to scale it, this is our scale here. I've shown you it before. It's very handy having this in our yard. The display on here flips forwards and backwards, uh, like a mirror image so that you come through this way towards us here now, right? And in your mirror, you can see it when it's flipped. So I'm gonna put you guys down here so that you can see me as I come onto the scale. You'll also be able to see how heavy I am. I need you guys to stay here, okay? Don't let the wind blow you off, please. This is my good GoPro. You know what? That's a bad idea. I had you balanced on here, and uh, I don't want you falling in there, okay? I don't know how I'd get you back. Look how big this thing is. You'd be like at the bottom there. There'd, there'd be no way to get you out. I'd have to cut the pole off. Okay, bad idea, Josh. Let's find a different spot for you where you can see that. If I had a piece of wood I could put on top of there, you know what? I bet you I could find something. I bet you I could find something. Give me a minute. You think that'll work? Maybe. Guess we'll find out. The joys of behind the scenes with Trucker Josh. Okay, I'm gonna balance this on here. That way you can't fall in there. And I can put you right here. And then you can see me go over the scale. Okay. I think that's gonna work. Promise me you'll hold on, okay? Don't let this wood fall. All right, this is uh, 
that's that's how that's how it's gonna be you got to take risks in life to get ahead okay We got our steer tires on the scale right now, just the steers. I'm allowed to have 12,000 pounds on this axle. 9,920 pounds. Okay. allowed 34,000 pounds in the US on my drive tires. Those two axles behind the truck, that's the drive tires. I was at 29,920. Now I've got the trailer back here. It's called Tandem because there's two axles. I'm allowed 34,000 as well. And we're at 31,540. So there's a little more weight on these than there are on those over there. If I had been there in Saskatchewan when this was loaded, I would have definitely gotten them to load this freight further forward which would have put more weight on my truck and less on here. But we're legal nonetheless. The reason you want more weight on your truck than on your trailer is because you want to carry the weight, you don't want to pull it. Or another way of saying it is you, you want to carry the majority of the weight and not pull the majority of the weight. What this does when my trailer axles have more weight on it than my truck axles, it gives a very bumpy ride. Every time I hit a bridge connection, my truck will go over it and then my trailer will go over it and it'll want to, call it a donkey kick and over every bump it'll always donkey kick me so it's gonna be a little bit of a rougher ride going down nothing too unmanageable it's not gonna be that bad but it's also worse for fuel economy and in winter time it's worse for traction you want as much traction on your drive tires as possible because that's what's gonna get you moving on the snow and ice if you have more weight back here you're just gonna sit spinning on the snow and ice so it's always a good practice if you have a choice, go right up to the max legal weight with full tanks on the truck. Whatever's left over, put it on the trailer. You'll have the smoothest ride, you'll have the most traction. It's just, it's the correct way to do it. Not, not that there's anything wrong with the way this is loaded. It's just, it could have been loaded further forward, but this is legal and uh, it's manageable. Not gonna be a big deal. We'll run with it. There's nobody here to adjust it for me right now. I'm the only one in the yard. I think there's one other guy here, but it'll be fine. And that, I'm gonna bring along uh, my uh, stapler and some cardboard pieces tomorrow. I'm gonna staple the cardboard on top of that to the wood so that that keeps that from flapping around everywhere. It's, it's either that or we rip it all the way off. It doesn't have to be on there. It's just, it, it should be. It is what it is. The wind gets underneath it and rips it up. Just pulled myself behind the tent here. The wind is coming from that way, this way, so I hid myself behind the tent here so I can strap without the wind. So I'm out of the wind and when I'm throwing the straps over, the wind doesn't mess around with me as much. But yeah, I'll show you how, to, uh, how I fix that tomorrow. Uh, it's very simple. Like, you guys get what I meant, right? Like with the cardboard. You could also use anything else that a staple will shoot through. Uh, you just put it back down where it was, right? And then you put the piece of cardboard over top of here, or a piece of rubber, a piece of anything. Anything that the staple can go through. You put it on here on the corner, and you staple that on there to the wood, and then that holds that on there, right? Because if you just put the staple through this stuff, the wind will rip right through that. The staples will rip through it, and it'll be woo back to flying around. Like a crazy, wild, inflatable flailing arms man in no time. You know what's frustrating about wind? It's everywhere. 
parked behind the tent here because the wind was coming from that way, right? This way. Well, guess what it's doing now? It's going around here. It's coming in here now. It's coming around the corner. It's still got a mess of it and deal with it. No use complaining about it because I've tried. You can complain about it all day and it won't stop. I don't know where the off switch is. I haven't found the off switch for the wind. The prairies, it seems to be locked in the on position. It's always windy. Got her all tied down, ready to go tomorrow. Another way you can solve the issue of the flapping uh, covers on here is with just an extra strap. I put an extra strap in the center there, and then that pins that corner down, that pins that corner down. The wind might still rip, pull it out of there a little bit, but it won't flap around as badly. So that's one option. You might not even need to staple it on again this way. This might hold it, right? That's one way you can fix that. But look how shredded this is in the front here already from the wind. See that? And it's only being held on by that little corner there. So I'm gonna bring my stapler in anyways. Just staple that on there so that it stays, stays tight on there. I don't know why they make them like that, but any of you guys who haul lumber know what I'm talking about. It doesn't happen on every load, but sometimes the wind catches it just right. And they staple these things on, right? Oh, this is ripped through already. See, this is gonna rip open soon too. They do staple them on in the yard there. What can I show you in this? Usually they put little like corners on it, but they didn't in this case. Ah, okay, so that makes sense why this is ripping off. Very often they'll have uh, like little plastic circles on here and then they'll staple through the plastic circles so that the circle sort of stays on there like a washer almost. I see they didn't do that on this. I don't know if they always do it like this, but that's why this is ripping off. See, this is all ripped too. That's why, okay. Got some more staples in there. These are all ripped. Yeah, this is all gonna shred open. Okay, yeah, I guess it all depends. Uh. Maybe uh, got a little expensive getting those little plastic circles, those washer type things to hold it on there. But I mean, if you don't put those on there, this is what happens. It shreds open. And what can you do, right? Whoa, what was that? Ah! What was that? Just got attacked by a weird bug. It's coming back. I'll bite you. Watch right here. I'll fight you. What are you doing landing on me? You see this thing? Land somewhere so I can see how ugly you are. You can't fly forever, man. There he is. There he is. What is it? What is it? What are you, man? <laughs> Whatever that was. I landed right on my neck. <laughs> hate bugs. That's why I could never live in Australia. That's why I live in the northern part of the empire. <laughs> or whatever you call it now, commonwealth. I live in the northern commonwealth. You guys down there in Australia, doing the Lord's work living down there with all those killer animals. Man, <laughs> I don't know how you do it. Oh, I'd love to come visit you one day, but uh, I'm gonna need some kind of Steve Irwin type of guide because it's gotta be fun, but someone's gonna have to protect me. <laughs> I mean, I'll fight a crocodile, but I'll probably lose. <laughs> Imagine me, Canadian just going off. Crikey, look at the size of that one. Let's some air conditioning. All right, jokes aside, Let's go park this trailer, let's get this truck in the shop, and let's go home. I've been saying that for a while now already. I wanna go home. It's already, uh, oh, it's four o'clock now. Oh, I'll probably only get home at like six. At least I'll get the evening tonight, I guess. Oh, I get the evening. But remember, next weekend, I skipped this weekend, but I get two weekends next weekend. We gave her a quick rinse. Still dirty, not clean, but rinsed. Got all the bugs off at least. Don't have time to polish her tonight, but at least she doesn't have to go to sleep covered in bugs. So in the morning, we're gonna take that load of lumber down to Fargo and uh, 
see what happens from there. I don't know what my reload is. Apparently there is a plan for me already, so there is a reload. They just haven't sent it through to me yet, so I don't know what it is. I don't really care. <laughs> so I think it's bringing me up to Yorkton, Saskatchewan, unless it, that got changed, but. You have a good night, all right? Just on my way home from the shop and we got some action going on on Main Street in Steinbeck today. Look at this. I dare say there's a fire. That's not good. Looks like it's at the feed mill here, right on Main Street. Yikes. Crazy. Just waiting for traffic to move along here, but obviously everyone, including myself, is being the biggest rubbernecker in the history of Steinbeck. Got one fire engine there blowing water on it already. It might not be the feed mill, it might be this strip mall here. Oh, we got an audience. Look at all the people gathered here. Oh, the whole town came out to see. Oh no, it's not the feed mill. Oh my, it's uh, it's the strip mall. Dude, man, the red hand still means something. Look at all these people. Nothing better to do on a Sunday. I guess Sunday Matterschlop is canceled. You could see the smoke from our backyard here before. If you follow me on Facebook, you probably saw the, the post about reporter Chevy. That was actually a photo bomb that he did. I was standing over there trying to get a picture of the smoke to show my family how we could see it from our place. And Chevy was so excited that I had just gotten home, he jumped up in front of the camera and photo bombed it. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, the fire looks like it's destroying a strip mall on Main Street. There's a flooring store in there, and there's two paint stores. So the smoke is considered toxic. There's a pet store. And we went out to get ice cream this evening yet, and we heard from a few people that uh, only one of the pets in the pet store survived. I don't know if that's true or not. That's not confirmed or anything. That's just hearsay on the street. I hope it's not true. But uh, I didn't think they had pets in that pet store. I thought it was just like a, a pet food store where you can go and get pet food. And I'm pretty sure that's true. So I don't know if any pets died, but still. There's a pet food store, and like I said, two paint stores, so you gotta be careful with the smoke outside. It's drifting away from my house, uh, but it is drifting towards my sister's house on the other side of town. So uh, everyone's, you know, obviously we gotta keep our windows closed, and uh, if the smoke drifts our way, we're supposed to go inside and shut off any vents that are sucking air from, like our furnaces that are sucking air from outside and stuff, or I guess people have furnace filters, so I don't know if, that to if those toxins would get caught up in the filter. I, I don't know, better safe than sorry. Yeah, it's devastating. That's uh, actually our paint store. That's where we get the paint for our house. I don't know if you've noticed, but we patched up the paint on our house and we're uh, in the middle of it. I was about to go there in the next week or so and get another can of paint so we can paint the whole house. Let me show you what I'm talking about. The smoke's not drifting this way. I'll, I'll go outside and show you. We've had uh, problems with our paint peeling on our house. We're gonna redo the outside with proper like, vinyl siding yet, but uh, whoever painted the house last, uh, painted it with some cheap paint or the wrong kind of paint for the siding and uh, it was peeling off pretty bad. I didn't show it in the vlogs because obviously I don't want to show my house with paint peeling all over. It looks pretty ghetto. But like here's one place here that I had painted over now. I fixed this. The paint had peeled off. Right out front here was really bad. All of this. All of this from here all around there was all peeled off. You could just see the wood siding underneath it. It looks so trashy. So obviously I didn't want to show that on my videos, but now that I've uh, I got matching paint from the paint store there, uh, Janssen's, and, uh, but you can see that the matching paint that I got was a perfect match. Like they, they, they matched the paint perfect, but they put too much gloss in it, I guess, and it's shinier than the old paint, or maybe the old paint's faded in the sunlight already. You can tell where I, where I painted over it, right? over here too and 
up there. And it, eh, it looks better than it did, right? But I'm not finished. Uh, I just patched it up for now, and now I'm gonna put a layer of paint over the entire house. And hopefully next summer we'll be able to afford replacing all of this siding with vinyl siding. Uh, we'll go with the same company that did our roof at our old house, Watson's Roofing and Siding. We're gonna get them to come here and do this as well. We really like them. You can sort of see it on the back as well. Can you see those, like how patchy it is? There's three there. See, it was close, so close. It was just too glossy, too shiny. Anyways, the reason I'm showing you this is because Jansen's paint is burning right now. Uh, I guess you can't see the small guy standing right over here when Chevy photobombed me. Uh, can you still see it? Uh, it's mostly, oh, you can see a little bit of it right there. You see that? A little bit of it, but it was just black smoke coming up and it's drifting that way. But uh, the I, I don't know if they're, their part of the strip mall got burned. I'm pretty sure the whole thing is going to be. I uh, hope they got really good insurance. But anyways, yeah, I guess uh, we may have to go to one of their Winnipeg branches or something to get our paint now. Because I was going to go there next week and get uh, a couple of cans of paint so we can do a whole layer on this whole house. And now, all of that paint is currently on fire. Won't be much good to me now, but... Yeah, it's, uh, looks like they've pretty much got it extinguished. The news is saying that they'll probably be there. Uh, the firefighters will probably be there all night. Just uh, keeping an eye on it. And tomorrow we'll hear more about what, uh, what the damage is and what the reason is. Chevy seems to think it's the cats. He wants to blame it on the cats. But, uh, I don't know, it's a Sunday, everything's closed. I really hope it wasn't arson. That wouldn't be my first guess. I don't think it would be. It's not that kind of town. But, you know, things keep changing. I'm pretty sure it's probably going to be some kind of electrical or some kind of accident somewhere. We'll find out tomorrow anyways. Chevy, everyone loved your reporting. Everyone saw your Facebook post. Very good. Reporter Chevy. That's it for today. I've got to get ready for bed because tomorrow morning we've got to get that lumber down to Fargo. I don't want to leave too late. I'd like to get down there with enough time to get reloaded if possible. I don't know where my reload is yet, but... Thanks for watching. Hit that thumbs up button if you like it. Hit the subscribe button to figure out what happens tomorrow. See you later.